unusual presentation this morning in that we've got a duo. Um, initially, Andrew approached me about giving his presentation with Crit and said, hey, and I've got the second presenter because we're doing this in tandem. I thought, what, really interesting. Okay, we can do this. So Tyler Woods is joining him uh, with Scale Up On Demand. We hesitated, I have to say, in all honesty, because they are a consulting, each of them are uh, consulting entities serving the startup community. However, they're startups themselves. They're, they've got a scalable idea, and the content of what they're doing is very relevant to our community and what many other startups are doing as well. I can't tell you how many times people approach me. Do you know an app developer? You know, it, it, it happens weekly. So we're interested to see how you guys blend this, and we'll look forward to the Q&A afterwards. So Andrew, Tyler, welcome. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So Andrew and I uh, met a few months back, but we developed a co-understanding uh, and uh, because of the clients we work with, with a lot of B2B uh, SaaS-focused startups that they go through uh, three different uh, steps on their journey to what we call map your startup uh, here. And so uh, I'll give you a little background about myself, Andrew, it'll help you understand, but we'll give you the three uh, steps to where we have developed this understanding that we know your startup will be in. Uh, so again, I'm Tyler Woods with Scale Up On Demand. Um, Scale Up On Demand is a group that we help uh, B2B and SaaS focused startups uh, grow their revenue and sales operations. Um, and again, we you know we work with software focused companies that are uh, usually under five people, have small sales teams, uh, really need to define their product market fit, need help prospecting, selling, growing, um, need revenue operations support. So they need all of this help, but we help uh, all in one place instead of them having a fractional CMO, a CFO, uh, you know, a business development person, et cetera. So we're all on one umbrella and we really are focused with who we prospect into and how we help software focused companies. So I'll let Andrew uh, tell a little bit about Crit. Hey, well, uh, so as Tyler said, I'm Andrew Askins. I'm with Crit. We're a dev shop based out of Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and we specialize in helping non-technical founders uh, bring their ideas to life, uh, build new tech products. So people who um, have really no idea how to get an app off the ground, don't really have any interest in coding, um, but know their business and know it really well. Um, they come to us and we team up with them, help them figure out exactly what they need to build, and then we design it and build it for them. So as Tyler was saying, um, we met a few months ago and um, just got to talking and realized we had similar a similar customer base. So we were both working with these um, primarily business to business SaaS companies, so these tech companies. Um, and another thing we realized was that a lot of the people we're working with are first time founders. Um, maybe they've run a small business before or they've done something similar, um, but it's the first time they're actually starting a new tech company. Um, and one of the things that we were seeing all of our clients struggle with is, is focus. Uh, hopefully this is, this is familiar to some people in the room. I know it is to me. Um, when you're just in those early stages and you're trying to get your startup off the ground, one of the hardest things is knowing where to focus on. It feels like there are a million different things pulling your attention in totally different directions. Um, and, and so we wanted to try to find a way to help our clients together um, figure out where to focus, where to best use their time, um, with the goal of helping them get to their uh, ideal state, their, 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 achieve their goals faster, more efficiently, and ultimately by spending less money. Um, so what we've started to work on together uh, and what we want to talk to you about today is not actually either of our companies. Um, instead, it's this initiative that we've been working on together, um, and it's really educational content that we're working on. Um, and for lack of a better word, it's, it's kind of a map is, is our goal. It's a, um, a map of the startup journey. Um, and we're hoping to uh, build this content and, and see if it's valuable to startups. And if it is, then find ways to deliver it to them um, so that we can help them as our clients or just uh, through whatever they're doing. Um, so we've broken this map into three phases. The first phase is validate, the second phase is fit, and the third phase is grow. Um, and now we'll dive a little bit more into each of those phases and talk about how we see those working, how long they last, um, and, and what some of the common hurdles are that we see startups running into in each of these phases. Uh, but one thing um, 
this is still very much a work in progress. We're still figuring this out, um, and we definitely don't have all the answers. So um, we'd love to hear from you all afterwards. If there's something we're missing, um, please let us know. Absolutely. So uh, the first opportunity here is, you know, validating, you know, determining if, you know, my product or my service, I'm sorry, I guess <laughs> I'm usually yell here, um, is, you know, is it viable? Is it, you know, is it something that I need to, you know, get out to people? I have this great understanding that I think it's a great product or service, but, you know, I might only have five customers. So, you know, a lot of people skip this step and they jump straight into, you know, determining their fit in the market, but they really need to, you know, focus on validating, you know, their product market fit, not just having three cousins that think it's a great idea, but, you know, really understanding that who they're going to go after, what their product is, and not, and, and really being specified about it, and then moving into, you know, really fitting within their actual market itself, too. Cool. So, we typically see people spending, uh, ideally, no more than six months here. So, it's a fairly quick phase. Um, and again, the idea is to get in early and uh, make sure that there's a real problem and a real need. Um, from there, once you've identified that there's a real problem, that's when uh, we see people moving into what we call the fit phase. Um, so this is where you're looking for th that product market fit and you really want to get that defined. So the question you're answering here is, what does my customer really want? You've figured out that there's a problem, you've validated that there is a problem and there is a need but now you're figuring out what exactly the solution looks like and how you deliver that. Um, so really in that first phase, we encourage people not to build anything at all, um, to try to just talk to customers, do customer research, maybe build a, a prototype that, you know, uh, some way to sort of convey their ideas, but not to start building any tech. Um, and so here is when you really want to get your MVP, that minimum viable product, out the door and into the hands of your first customers. Um, in this stage, people are spending about 18 months. Um, they've got you know probably less than 50 customers. This will be different if you're a consumer company, but for a B2B SaaS company, you know you're still just under 50 customers. And um, again, one of the mistakes here is we see people try to rush through this too quickly. So people start trying to scale too fast. Um, you know they want to do. They have this big grand vision, and that's awesome. That's what makes us all entrepreneurs. Um, but if you try to scale too quickly, then you run the risk of like missing some some painful um, parts that can make your product a lot better. So here, you really want to just focus on on making sure that you've got a solution that people love, and and building those early adopters and um, enthusiasts in your product. Yeah, and again, the last phase here is probably the most important. It's the grow phase. So this is understanding, you know, the need to scale your business and, you know, having this roadmap for, <laughs> no pun intended, again, for how long you want to scale your business and, and what that actually looks like. Again, so usually this takes about, uh, you know, 18 months. Um, you've got around 150, maybe more customers. Um, and this is you getting ready to sell to an angel investor, um, getting ready to sell your business, go after a, you know a large round of funding, um, and, and again, just uh, you know, the cost can vary here, but this is really determining. You might have a you know a small marketing team, but this is putting you know an actual chief marketer in place, or you might have your CFO or your CEO that's actually selling. But this is putting junior sales reps in your organization and you know, determining exactly how you want to build your in-house team. So again, this is. This is really placing the map, uh, laying the map out for how we want to build each specific team, how long each one is going to take, and understanding, you know, the most important uh, roles that are going to be uh, in that growth itself. Yeah, and same on the product side. If you don't already have a technical team, this is the, the part where, in order to scale, you're going to really need to start building that team and filling those key roles. Um, and if you've done a good job in the in the fit phase, that becomes a lot easier. So. Uh, why are we doing this now? Um, one, because we just met three months ago. Um, but also, I'm from Charleston, uh, Tyler's from Charlotte, and you know, 10 to 15 years ago, communities like this didn't exist in, in Charleston and, and Charlotte. We didn't see incubators and accelerators. We didn't see lots of people starting tech startups. Um, that's happening more and more now, and that's awesome. Uh, but what we're seeing is that some of those people are running into the same problems again and again. And so we just want to try to find a way to help people avoid some of those common mistakes, um, figure out how to use their money uh, more wisely and more efficiently so that they can grow more quickly and, um, and get through the process faster, 
build really impactful businesses. Yeah, absolutely. And the biggest thing here is roadblocks we've encountered and ones we want you guys to tell us. So, you know, who do we need to be speaking to? Do we need to be speaking to, you know, CEOs or founders, or do we need to also be speaking to investors and who can also, you know, give this message? Is it, you know, just us or is it, you know, people that have been into four or five different startups that are going to, you know, prove their credibility? Um, again, so, we, you know, we would love for you guys to, you know, uh, give us your ideas of what roadblocks you think we have getting this message out What's the easiest way to understand these three different, you know fit validate and grow? Uh, you know steps in our map um, And again, just what's the easiest way to digest some of this too to anybody and everybody too, so cool. And then finally our ask for you all here today is pretty simple um, Maybe there's some people in the crowd who are starting startups themselves um, Maybe there's some people who are service providers marketers um, you know, lawyers, uh, contractors even who work with startups and who see pieces of this that they can help fill out, uh, pieces that we're missing that we're not thinking about. Um, we both know a, a good bit about uh, sales and product design and development, um, but we don't know what it takes to, to get a uh, building put together and um, when people should really start uh, focusing on that and it, there's a lot of a lot of things here that, that we think we can add on so we'd love to hear from you if, if you have any ideas on how we can make this better um, okay. thanks y'all that's our Thank presentation Yep, yep. Yep. Right here. Uh, what we'll do is, if you have any questions, raise your hand. I'll point to you. That'll get you in order. Then you don't have to keep your hand raised the whole time, and we'll get it in order. So, thanks. I think it would be helpful to understand your backgrounds, uh, each of you. I, why, why would anybody want to listen to you guys? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, I'll start with my background. Um, so I've been running Crit for four or five years now, um, and we started off as a B2B SaaS product. So um, we started off actually building a product that we were selling, um, launched it on Product Hunt, did a lot of the usual things. Um, after about a year and a half, though, we shut it down because in large part, we didn't get through some of these phases quickly enough, um, and we got burnt out, and we never quite found a market that, that our product was really in. Um, Luckily, at the time, we had started doing some consulting on the side to pay the bills, uh, and, and that's how Crit as it is today was born. So we've now been consulting for two or three years, um, and we work with lots and lots of startups. Uh, I say lots and lots, that's probably not accurate. We work with a small group of people, um, but we've worked with several companies now, and we've started to see patterns, and um, we've just noticed those, and yeah. Yeah, and so my organization, um, again, is we're both B2B focused, um, but we're more SaaS and tech focused, and we've worked with, you know, our, our issue is finding the best size of business that we want to work with. We've worked with agencies that have, you know, been five people and a, one salesperson, but we've worked with also, you know, a hundred person uh, organization. So again, it's the, the issue is trying to determine uh, what's the best fit for, uh, for each one of our organizations and how to get our message out and how do we truly streamline uh, that messaging and, and, and you know put into place junior sales reps and you know revenue operations assistant or so again it's uh, it's really honing in on the size of our business too. That wasn't really the question. Yeah, the question, question was what's your background? Yeah so again my, that's scale up background but my personal background is uh, you know account and project management for large and small marketing agencies. I've done business development uh, for the last four years um, and again worked for own tech app development companies etc too. So. Yep. Here's the next question over here. So first of all, uh, kudos to you for getting up and sharing an idea that takes some guts. Uh, second of all, uh, you, you mentioned several different time frames associated with the three different phases that you spoke of. I'd be curious to know what your time frame is for, for taking this idea to market. Maybe you mentioned that, I just missed it. No, no, uh, we did not, and we're still figuring this out. So I'd say we're still in the validate phase. Um, so. Uh, we gave our first presentation on this uh, about a month ago, so we're about a month in. Ideally, within six months or so, within you know, ideally we'll follow our own advice here. So, um, six months or so, uh, we'll have an idea of is is this content really valuable, and um, do people want a a map of the startup journey, or you know, is it really not something they're interested in? And then from there, we'll we'll refine exactly how we're going to package this content and deliver it to people uh, and, and really bring it to market at that point. So does that answer your question? It does, thank you. Cool. Right 
Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning. I missed the first couple of minutes, but I don't think you covered this. Um, have you done any uh, exploratory work in terms of the launch programs that are out there, in terms of CEDs, VMS program? Um, there are a lot of communities, and I think you touched on how supportive this community is here in the Research Triangle Park. Um, lots and lots of free help mm -hmm. to do what you guys are talking about, I assume, charging for. So although you get great, I think, ass assistance in understanding how to do it, uh, I can tell you from personal experience, there's a lot of free competitive help here to make it uh, an impairment for you to be able to make money at it here. Now, that doesn't mean it won't work in Charleston, it doesn't mean that it won't work in Greensboro or Rocky Mountain or Fayetteville, but uh, great educational experience, but have you looked at those is the question. Yeah, so um, I know that uh, Doug, one of Tyler's partners, um, has been talking to a lot of incubators. I know he's talked to some people in Atlanta, um, and so he he's looking at ways that we can partner with those people rather than trying to compete with them outright. Um, and we're not at the moment planning on trying to make money off of this content. The idea is just to deliver this content as an educational piece um, to help people move more quickly and also to deliver to our clients as an additional reason to work with one of us. So both of us make our money through our consulting businesses. Um, and you know the content is just an add-on. It's something, another reason to work with us, um, I, I think. Yeah, and, and again, this is just to grow our referral network. Um, again, get us indoors with incubators, accelerators, more as, as simple educators just from the brief experience we've had. Again, this is, uh, this is just a, an intro uh, addition to our services and to more or less be able to offer uh, our services, other, you know, other partners we've come in contact with. Again, just getting the message out and you know, the importance of putting your startup into one of our three phases. Yeah. And just one more quick piece to add. As incredible as all the support is that's cropping up in communities like this and in Charleston and Charlotte and Atlanta, uh, we still see these a lot of the people we work with going through the same problems. So uh, I still think there's a problem to be solved here. Hey guys, thanks for the presentation. I'm, I'm, I might have missed it, so I apologize if I did, but is the product itself the validate, fit, and grow, or do you also have specific milestones associated with each that you're helping them move through? And then uh, just an additional question, is six months the expected amount of time to validate? Because a lot of the clients that I work with, man, they're money and time dries up at six months or before then. So just some, we'll love your thoughts there. Yeah, um, so first question, uh, still honestly fleshing out what the product will be as far as the content. Are there gonna be more detailed milestones or are just these three phases enough? Um, so I, I don't think we have an answer to that yet. Um, the second question, uh, six months is probably, you're right, probably on the high end. Um, a lot of the clients that I've worked with personally, and I'll let Tyler speak to his experience, um, you know, that six months might incorporate time when they're still working at another job. They haven't quit and gone full time on this. So it's the really early stage of just like from, I've got an idea, I'm writing it down on the back of a napkin, and I'm just starting to get out and talk to people, and I'm trying to see is it worth it to quit my job and stuff. So. Um, you know, a lot of times we see people spending as much as six months there, but yeah, obviously the faster people can get through uh, each phase, the, the better. Yeah, and I, and I again think that was definitely built on the high side to uh, to be to be helpful for us. Again, we want that to be cut in half. We want to you know help people eliminate cash burn, help them you know not have to go through three iterations of the of a marketing person or you know whatever it may be too. So this is definitely the average of what we see people going through, and we want to see it cut in half or even a third of that and you know obviously cost and time and everything is, is super valued for all these people so thanks good to be back right here. hey guys um, i'm consistently not as smart as anybody in this room so <laughs> to help people like me i'm probably the only one get a better understanding of what in the world you're talking about can you either tell us about one of your success stories or if you're not able to do that tell us your best case scenario somebody walks in to your door from beginning until end, when you guys are thrilled out of your mind, like awesome, we did a great job, 
So either one, either one will be cold. Yeah, I think I think the greatest uh, win for us right now because we're not at success stories yet. This is totally informative, and we haven't just been working long enough. But I think the greatest win right now would be for somebody to come in and just to be able to in- educate them on what positions they need to fill. You know, again, what their next six months needs to look like, and then be able just to put somebody in place that we know or ourselves at either one of our companies to assist them with too. So again, we are super super in front ourselves and been around for three months. So. Yeah, and so, like Tyler said, each of our, our consulting businesses may have success stories, but this is a totally new thing that we're um, we're just trying out. So, um, yeah, not there yet, but hopefully soon. And like he said, I think ideal scenario is um, one of us meets somebody, we can give them this content, and we can get them through this, and and you know, in two years or uh, or less, you know, get them to the point where they're growing rapidly. Don't you want to know if you answered my question? Did I answer your question? <laughs> no, I've been daydreaming actually this whole time. <laughs> you know Sorry. Thank you. Right up here, then I got over here, then over here, then back to the Great. Hey guys, I've been trying to figure out how to make this a question, but it's really more of a comment. Um, what you're describing sounds like kind of content marketing that a lot of consultants have done over the ages. Um, So I would suggest that you look into things like the business model canvas, uh, which is free. It's, uh, the the canvas itself is open sourced. It's based on on years of practice and there's a community around it and there's a book and all of that stuff. And you were talking about, it doesn't need more detail. And I'd say, yeah, Yeah. Um, and including the things you're being challenged on here Mm -hmm. in terms of what's the track record? How do we know that your model has been proven in the market? Mm-hmm. Um, and I would definitely compare, you know, you're, you're on a path that's been paved. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would recommend that you look at the way others have done this and, and what they needed to accomplish to have their models really take off. Great. Awesome. Thank you. That's great feedback. Thanks. Hey, Greg. Um, I uh, echo what other people said. It takes a lot of guts to come up here, so good job with that. Um, question for scale up on demand. I checked out your website. I think you're onto something big. You know, product market fit. You know, easy to say, hard to do, right? And um, just open-ended question. You know, for you is how does how does one know that they've, they've reached product market fit? Just like to hear kind of your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's done through our, our analysts we have in-house that we come in and we uh, truly peel back your actual data. We have somebody that's gonna come in and prospect for you or we actually have, you have prospectors in house that you know we're going to be able to put an analyst that peels back your actual CRM system that you have in place or put one in place ourselves is actually going to give you that feedback so does that help answer your question what what sort of hard so question. what are what are some of the signs you look for that indicate product market fit so again having a, you know a consistent customer base over a certain period of time uh, having a generic growth of revenue over a certain period of time, again, and, and having it super specified with the product. Um, if it's just one product individual that we're gonna go after and help, so. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, so again, thanks for uh, for coming up here and doing this, because it's not easy. In this room, there's about 75 people, at least 30 or 40 of whom have either worked on uh, the problem itself, and so you're probably getting some both some useful feedback as well as some uh, some uh, free market research for your idea, right? So, <laughs> so that's, that's the gift to you, right? Um, uh, so I don't happen to believe that that this path has has been paved because every entrepreneurial startup is radically different from almost every other one. And so the challenges that they face, whether it's lack of funding during the initiation phase of a project or or how they go about doing product research, competitive analysis, market research is going to be significantly different. So I think that there needs to be more people like yourselves and other people in the room helping out other entrepreneurs, especially here in the triangle where we have a rich and a fertile ground uh, to to be able to get startups going. So thanks again. Absolutely. Thank Thank you. I'm going to walk over here, but I'll ask a quick question within there. Within this group, how many people do you think you can work with at a time or groups you can work with at a time? I mean, we could chunk out five or ten person groups if you want, whatever's easiest. Oh, no, I mean, with, with the company, <laughs> companies you're going to work with, how many do you think you can work with at a time? So how many how many people can you work with at a time? And I'll answer. So for, for Crit, um, you know, we usually have three or four projects running at a time. Uh, so we're still a pretty small team. We've got four four people, including myself. 
Um, and we uh, like to spend a lot of time with people and really get into the trenches. So uh, we usually don't have a ton of clients at any one time, but um, yeah, three or four is probably about what we run. Yeah, and right now we've got two that are, uh, one's fully spun up, we've got six people in place right now, and then we've got another client that's got two people in. So we're a team of about eight or 10, and we can individually work to help people out if we're just prospecting or if we're just doing marketing or operations, but um, we usually like to be fully spun up with three or four guys in a group, so three groups usually is who we like to work with, I'd say in my average. Just part of the group. What's really great about is, although the path may have been paved or not, if you could only work with three, four, five, six companies, there's a big need for people to be doing that and yep. fit whatever model you guys are working with to do that. Next question, right over there. Uh, yes, good morning, Tyler and Andrew. How do you guys market or advertise your services? So again, individually for scale up on demand, obviously website, word of mouth has been our biggest cheerleader and um, you know, in past experiences uh, with companies we work with just in the last year or two. So I think individually, um, and right now uh, we have not done any marketing for this, you know, this info other than just online word of mouth uh, for our presentation here. Yeah, and then for, for crit services, um, it's pretty similar. Uh, a lot of old school networking, hitting the ground, talking to people, shaking hands. Um, a lot of word of mouth, so clients referring people to us. Um, obviously always want to continue that, but then um, you know, new content marketing is, is an area that I'm trying to really push into. Um, so I've started doing some of that on Crit's behalf, and then um, the goal obviously for this would be for this to do some of that as well for both of us. Right here. Right yeah. here. So, Hang in there, you're doing a great job. Um, I've been trying to think how to, how to form the question. So I've heard you describe your ultimate goal as having educational content. So first question, I have two questions. First question is, uh, have you considered partnering with local educational institutions that are teaching things along the lines of entrepreneurship and, and startup um, curriculums and things of that nature. Second of all, I guess the second question maybe depends on where your ultimate goal is. If you plan to maintain ownership of this content, then is it just a customer walks in and you hand them a document and say, read this, you'll know all, or is there coaching and counseling and mentorship, uh, partnerships where you're brokering relationships with uh, the needed expertise that they need as they evolve and move through those different phases? Um, so let me answer the second question first. Uh, I think both. Um, so I think ideally we'd get to the point where we could both have some sort of packaged content, um, whether it's a book or a, a something like the business model canvas or um, you know a website, whatever it looks like, some content that we could hand to somebody and if they don't want any extra coaching, if they want to figure it all out themselves, they can take that and run with it. Um, but then um, the nature of, of our businesses and, and the way we like to work with people, I really love coaching startups. I love working with them and getting in and helping them figure out their problems. And uh, like someone mentioned, you know, every startup is a little different. And so there's never gonna be one perfect one size fits all solution. Um, so I think ideally there would be both uh, some packaged content that people could take and run with on their own and the uh, additional coaching services available to them. Um, uh, ideally, we'd be able to connect them to other people too, because the two of our businesses aren't going to be able to help every entrepreneur with every problem they have. And I think too, I mean, I'd love to see it grow into a, a questionnaire on our website or whatnot too that says, you know, do I do I qualify and where do I fall into this, and then prescribe much more detailed solutions, you know, data driven, um, and then be able to direct them to you know certain other referrals, websites, whatever it may be, to or actual con you know consult in person or on the phone with us. So. Can you repeat the first question? Just this. Uh, have you considered or have you been looking at educational institutions <coughs> that kind of curriculum? Yeah. Um, so Doug, again, uh, Tyler's partner, has been reaching out and talking to um, some accelerator groups, uh, but we haven't uh, thought about more traditional educational institutions yet. Um, good idea. Okay, we're right over here, then we're going over here, and then back over here. Yeah, I just um, wanted to say, I, I'm, I've been through two startup accelerators, and I just wanted to say um, the thing that I've seen that is the biggest need in this area is making sure that someone does not get into an accelerator before they're done with their validation. It's been one of the most awful things I've seen is when someone gets into that accelerator, 
gets twenty thousand dollars and then finds out that they've got an invalid business idea they're not going to quit and they end up spending nine months spinning their wheels wasting time and so i think for the biggest the biggest problem if you could focus on one thing is getting them prepared for that accelerator send them off to the accelerator and then they'll come back and and if you've done a good job with that they could be in place to take um your consulting services so that's just one idea that i had that's awesome feedback thank you all right Uh, I've actually got a couple questions. Um, it sounds like you guys are co-developing um, this this s uh, strategy together with two different companies. Uh, how is the intellectual property playing out on that? How do you work on, or where do the customers come from? Are you, do you have one website and you divide the customers up? And my third question would be, ultimately, when this is successful, which I hope it is, what would be your revenue model? Would it be charging per step, or would it be an equity stake, or how do you how do you see that playing out over time, and how do you split revenues? Um, awesome questions, all three. Uh, so um, I'll try to answer all of these. Remind me if I miss one. Um, so intellectual property, um, to be honest, we haven't really worried about that yet. Uh, it's something we'll have to talk about at some point, but right now we've been working on this together, collaborating on it together, um, and we each have copies of the content and are sort of a mutual understanding handshake deal if you will that either of us could could walk away and do whatever they want to with this um, so as we develop more detailed content um, then we'll probably have to figure some of that stuff out for sure um, where do customers come from right now again all of our customers this is something we're, we're thinking of doing for free just a, a content piece um, and all of our customers and all of our revenue comes from our individual consulting services. Um, so Scale Up On Demand has, has their clients and, and Crit has our own. Um, and we've started to try to pass stuff back and forth, um, again, because we have these complementary services and have the shared vision for how people should move through product. Um, so ideally, we can work together and, and help them more than we could individually. Um, and then what was your third question? What's your successful? What does the revenue model look like? Yeah, so I think. Um, that's a really good question. I think some of it will probably some of it will probably be the same as it is right now. The content is maybe free, and you know our revenue model stays you know just building uh, leads for our, our consulting businesses. But I think they're yeah you want to yeah, and I'd love to see it turn into a you know a referral program with incubators, accelerators, like everybody else is assisting us here too. So if uh, if we can draw the lines with individual incubators and accelerators, like he's saying, where they need to validate and whatnot. Um, and then be able to get somebody in and then know that they're going to be success successful in that incubator accelerator. Um, I think that's probably, uh, you know, one of our main goals here. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. I was just wondering, because this is what I thought, is that this content marketing, this content marketing is drawing your leads for your consulting, correct? Mm -hmm. So is it um, a thought to make it a 501c3? Maybe down the road. Um, again, we aren't th we aren't there yet. <laughs> I have, you know, I, I assume probably so once we get there. Uh, but it'll probably be you know at least six months I assume from now after going to do some of these getting awesome feedback. So. So again, uh, well, great job getting up there. Uh, and I like I like to look at your slides. So I like the way you organized your content. Um, sort of building on her question, if th if this is a content if this if the content is a lead to bring clients in how are you differentiating that content from you know lean startup uh, and uh, you know the, the whole series of books about lean and the whole movement about lean uh, how are you saying that this is somehow better than lean when it seems very similar to lean and how uh, and sh couldn't you also leverage the lean methodology in your teachings as opposed to sort of trying to rebrand it in a way uh, I mean if, if what you're trying to do is get people coming to you as trusted advisors uh, to help build their business yeah. um, why is your content what you're leading with as opposed to a set of methodologies yeah um, that's an awesome question uh, 
So I think lean, the lean methodology is something I, I personally really believe in, and uh, I imagine Tyler and, and Doug do as well. Um, so I don't, I think we've got to figure out how we can not compete directly with them and how we can incorporate the lean methodology because um, there is so much great work that's already been done there. Um, one area that we've sort of thought of, one way we've thought about maybe differentiating this a little bit more is um, a little bit more specific tactical advice. Um, so trying to get uh, more detailed with, um, and obviously that's not something we have yet, but working towards more specific tactical advice than some of these frameworks like the Lean Canvas or you know Lean in general necessarily provide. Um, that's obviously a challenge because again, then you start to run into everyone needs slightly different tactical advice. So um, there will be challenges there. Um, another thing that I think could differentiate us is, is both of us at the moment are really focused on uh, building startups in the southeast and I think that there are unique challenges to building a startup in the southeastern U.S. that maybe there aren't in on the west coast some things like that. So I asked this from the perspective of somebody who is just starting a business and actually needs help Awesome. but my initial reaction was I've read you know three of the lean books and I didn't see anything new here what specifically what are you offering to me right mm -hmm. so just take that as advice from somebody who might use your services. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. This is probably the last time you'll ever leave 45 minutes for Q&A, huh? <laughs> <laughs> We're here to keep that. Uh, so if, if dreams create the power and goals provide the focus, what are your goals for the next three months as it relates to this? Question. Yeah, great, great, great question. Uh, you know, how many, how many events can we get into? How many one million cup esque events can we get in front of people? And you know, how can we build out the website and then in turn build out our referral program? So I think the next couple months is how many people can we get to understand this message and be our cheerleaders itself to go out and do this for us and spread as you know our our boots team. Um, you know, five, ten people, um, and then in turn. Uh, you know, hopefully get any of them landed as clients and then indoors with incubators accelerators too. So I think the next couple months is just building people like-minded like ourselves that understand the, the need and understanding to get the message out. Yeah. So. And I would say before that, you know, the, the immediate goal is to validate that there really is a need for this and that we can differentiate ourselves from things like Lean um, or the business model canvas. Uh, so that's that's sort of a short-term goal and then long-term goal, yeah, is get in with incubators, figure out the, the content um, and, you know, create a really compelling package, get in front of people, and you know, give more feedback. So why differentiate? Why are you trying to differentiate yourself from something that people seem to think is successful? So you're, it's, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, maybe differentiate <laughs> isn't the way to go. Um, Apply? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's where I'm running into problems. Yeah. Is yeah, I, I could I could I could tell you lean startup. I could tell you, oh, well, they should do this and this. And yeah, I, I'm having trouble applying it. Right, okay. I'm trying to. The, so and that's a service that I might be willing to pay for. Cool. Execution. Execution. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you can read books all day, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What are what are some of the specific problems you you're struggling with? What are what's one thing you're trying to figure out how to execute on? I don't. Maybe after. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, you said a few times uh, that there are challenges in the Southeast to start up versus the West Coast. Okay, what is the big difference? I, I think there's a lot of business here to be had. So what do you see are the big differences? So uh, I have grown up here and um, started my business here. I, I have never been on the West Coast, so I uh, I, I probably spoke a little too soon. I, um, you know, I can only speak from my personal experiences and from what I've read. But from what I've read, uh, you know, capital is a little harder to come by here. Um, people, you know, spend, you have to bootstrap a little longer typically. Um, you know, in South Carolina, maybe more than around here. Uh, you know, access to talented software developers, especially software developers who are maybe willing to work on equ an equity basis or something, is a big challenge. Um, that an area, from what I've heard, like Silicon Valley, maybe is it's not as big a challenge. Obviously, everyone's clamoring for software developers. Uh, it's never, you know, going to go away entirely. But um, from what I've heard, and talking to people, 
you know, access to capital and access to talent are, are two of the big challenges at the early stage here. And it's not to say that those don't exist, they just might be a little harder to come by. And, and I think the biggest one too is, is cash or people burning all the cash that they get right up front too. So they get any type of funding and they want to spend it all, all immediately and grow as quickly as possible too. So that's one of our biggest goals here too is being strategic about how they're going to grow too. So again, and not spending every single dime they have and then, and then going out and just trying to get money from anybody and everybody that's going to be a voice in their ear too. So um, being smart about uh, the money that they're getting up front too and not, and not just burning it immediately. In this area, I think there's a ton of talent, a, a lot of really smart people, a lot of software developers, but the funding part, I would say, is a little bit harder to get to. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can explain a little bit uh, between the venture capitalists, what, you know, those types of funding versus angel versus, you know, the different types of funding available. You know, which one's harder or easier to get on the East Coast versus the West Coast? Um. So again, from what I've heard talking to people, almost uh, all of it is harder to get on the East Coast than the West Coast. Um, I can't speak to that personally because I, I haven't raised money on the West Coast, but from what I've heard, uh, angel and venture capital are, are both harder to come by here. Um, and a lot of that is because they're just, uh, you know, it's, it's a newer, a younger ecosystem here. Um, and, uh, you know, with what we see uh, from our clients personally and from what I've talked to with scale up on demand, they see a similar thing, is you really have to bootstrap um, to the point that you've got revenue and you've got a product and you've got a lot more proven um, before you're gonna raise that angel angel round. And you so you've gotta be able to paint a really compelling story. Obviously, you're gonna have to do that anywhere you raise money. Um, but, but from what I've seen, it's really hard to raise money here unless you already have revenue, already have a product in the market. Um, but maybe other people have a different experience. Yeah, and I think it's just, you know, sheer amount of people um, and competition in the area, too. Um, we seem big, but we, we're nothing to some of the, you know, the smaller and the larger areas over there, too. So I think it's just. All right, we have time for about probably one more question. Yeah, I'll just say hi uh, thank you for your presentation I heard in a uh, conversation about applying uh, lean versus replacing lean Have you ever considered supplementing lean mm. by identifying uh, some of the blind spots that Eric Rice had uh, described in the lean startup and in the startup way mm -hmm. I hadn't considered that to this point but that's a great a great idea thanks anyone else Good thing you have a video later for all the good ideas. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yep. oh, 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 <laughs> premature. <laughs> premature. I, um, I, I appreciate what, what you're doing here. Um, working with small startups and entrepreneurial companies for most of my career, one thing that I've found is most of them, in fact, I even think I hear it in what you're doing, fall short in looking at market research and competitor analysis, knowing who their competition is and how they are going to fit with the competition. Plus, what are truly the markets and what will the markets pay? You know, we heard here today there are some free alternatives there, or, or you create a business and do that. Are, do you guys have a business plan? That, that's the one thing I, I sort of, I heard a lot of questions and you said, well, I haven't thought of this yet, we haven't thought of that yet. Um, have you thought of putting together a strategic plan for what you're doing, how you're going to share your uh, your income uh, there, uh, you know, things like that? Yeah. Uh, I'll be completely frank now. We, <laughs> we don't have a business plan yet. Uh, we have business plans for each of our individual businesses, but not for the strong venture yet. Um, I, you know, I'm the kind of person who, and maybe this is a fault, but I, I like to get in and, and start collecting feedback before I, um, you know, try to put together, spend a lot of time putting together a strategic plan. Um, so I'm looking at it as we're still just in that, let's get feedback, let's hear from people, and then we'll put together a more strategic plan in a bit, but maybe that's something we're ready to do now. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right, now, thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Appreciate it. Um, it was a risk coming up here, right? When you don't have all the answers, it's going to be a little unnerving, but hopefully you will have benefited from it as well. I know we all have and appreciate it. I just have a quick question. It's a wonderful to see a f an absolutely packed room. We had to bring out more chairs, so thanks to everyone who came. How many are here for the first time? I hope it won't be your last. I hope you found that it was a worthwhile, uh, a good use of your time. Um, thank you for coming. Anybody have any community announcements?